Hello, everybody. So firstly, thank you very much uh, to the organizers, to Dinas, uh, and, and the other organizers for putting on a, a great event today. I really learned so much over the past couple of hours, chatbots and blockchain and computer vision. And it's really fascinating. These are real old cutting edge, cutting edge techniques. What I'm gonna talk about has been around for a lot longer, much more general. Uh, I'll talk a bit about my own experiences setting up data services, data analytics team here in Vietnam, and the opportunity that, that I feel it presents for the young Vietnamese people, which I think is the greatest opportunity that there is at the moment for Vietnamese people to compete on a level playing field, on a global stage. So one thing I mentioned uh, in the abstract there, something they call the... Uh, the, the digital universe. I don't know if you've ever heard this term. Digital universe is the amount of data that gets created and copied every year. They estimate that the digital universe by 2025 will grow to 180 zettabytes. Has anybody ever heard of a zettabyte before? No? There's some mathematician, there. there's a mathematician down here. But I never heard of a zettabyte a few years ago but it has 21 zeros, so it's two to the power of 70. All I know is it's, it's, it's a big, big number. We are not equipped to deal with this amount of data. We don't have the skills, we don't have the people, we don't have the tools, the hardware, the infrastructure. Today I'm gonna make some cheesy references, cheesy analogies between big data and a big wave and here's the first of them. We are facing a tsunami. You know a tsunami, yeah. <laughs> and we're balancing on top of it on a surfboard made of bamboo. So we're trying to figure out how we can cope with this huge amount of data that's flying all around. We've got Internet of Things. We, we, we've got uh, so many new personal devices. It's exploding. And we don't know how to deal with it. So what that has created is the most significant skill gap that I can think of in, 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 in my lifetime anyway. There has never been a skill gap like this. So a bit about myself. So this handsome guy here was the previous version. <laughs> Be before he discovered Kantan and uh, B.S. Agon and uh, Bundit Noon. Well, I came here to Vietnam first in, in 2007. We, we set up uh, an office. I moved out here full time in about 2010. My company, uh, I'm from Ireland, and today we're all very lucky and grateful to hear from the Irish ambassador who, who told a lot of really exciting stories about how Ireland is collaborating, not just with Vietnam, but with the city of Da Nang, and how my hometown of Cork City, it's only a small city, maybe 150,000 people, already has close collaborations with the city of Da Nang, with universities here as well. So it's really exciting, and I'm very, very lucky, uh, by pure coincidence, that, that uh, I'm able to, uh, to see this happening around me. Now, we established in Cork in, in, in 2007, and, and now we have the majority of our team here in Saigon, so we have about about 260 people in, in, in Saigon, and we have a small office in Singapore as well, in Block 71. What we do, it's uh, human resources technology. We work mostly with big tech companies in the US. So we work for Amazon and Apple, um, Cisco. We work with Google, Facebook, all the big guys basically, helping them to make sense of the talent pool, the talent market. So a lot of it is, is data services. It's about cleaning data, ranking, tagging, identifying the boring stuff. But over the years, we figured out, you know, there's a lot more value to be taken here if we can start taking insight out of the data. So rather than just tidying it up and packaging it and labeling it, and if we start to dig into it, 
and find out insights that our customers are not able to find themselves. So we started to get more and more high tech. We started to invest in data science. This is why, I, uh, so for a long time I tried to hire data scientists. First in Ireland, then in Vietnam. And it wasn't, wasn't easy because, let's say four years ago, if you go onto LinkedIn, and I did this, and you search location, Vietnam, job title, data scientist, there were 13 results. And nearly all of them working at the same company. A few years before that, I did the same thing on Vietnam Works. I looked for Amazon Web Services. I looked for AWS, and there was nobody. So it's very hard to find some of these emerging skills, these new terms that, that haven't really made mainstream yet. So we said we have to build our own team, but we couldn't hire from scratch, so we had, we had to train them. We had to grow our team of data scientists. Now we couldn't do it alone. We needed help from academia. So we worked with Vietnam National University, uh, John von Neumann Institute, and I'll get to that a little bit later. And it's my fifth time in Da Nang, and I hope that I'll be back a lot more in the future because it's a really beautiful city, and, and those clouds are looking a little bit scary, but uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll experience some more sunshine this weekend because we've been lucky with the weather. So let me just figure out how this works. There we go. Okay. So in Ireland, we also have surfing. It's not quite as glamorous as you have here. It looks a little bit dangerous there. This guy, uh, that's not me by the way, looks like he might be headed for, for, for a cliff there. Uh, it doesn't have the sun, it's freezing cold. But it's effectively the same thing. It's the same thing that you have out here, right? This water under his feet, it's connected. It's the same water that's crashing up on the beach over there. The sky above his head is the same sky, just a little bit of different part. The board beneath his feet is made of the same material. So what's the difference? What, he, what he's doing here and what we can do out there, it's pretty much a level playing field. That's why I like surfing, I don't do it, but I like it. Because as long as you can live near the beach and afford a surfboard, you can get out there and you can be as good as anybody on the planet in theory. Data analytics is very, very similar. You don't need capital. The data sources are freely available on the web. Bloomberg, for example, they export all of the stock market data. You can download it yourself. If you have the skills to analyze it, you can analyze it yourself. The skills are accessible. The skills you can teach yourself. There's free courses out there. There's things like Coursera, where you can go online. You won't be a complete expert, but it'll get you half of the way there. So this is a really special opportunity. You have the tools here in Vietnam. You have a very young, tech-savvy population that's highly ranked in science and technology. You have the exact same data sources at your fingertips that those guys, those those quantitative analysts on Wall Street have. It's just about how to fill the remaining pieces of the puzzle, domain knowledge, business acumen, storytelling, putting these things together and coming out with something at the other side. So a little bit about this gap that exists. This is a, an old quote from a couple of years ago and it's come true. So it said by, by 2018, the United States alone will face 50 to 60 percent gap between supply and demand of deep analytic talent. What this means is everybody is looking for data analytics talent in the US. So those companies that I mentioned to you, the likes of Google and Amazon and Twitter, we work with all of them and we always ask them, okay, so, so what are your priorities? What, what are the roles you really want to hire for and you cannot fill? It's always the same answers. It's, it's, it's the full stack engineers, it's the DevOps, uh, and it's the data scientists. Showing this a little bit more visually, this is my industry, this is HR analytics. So the blue countries 
those are the countries that are in big trouble. So the orange countries, they've got nothing to worry about. So I'll give you a minute there to try and find all the orange countries. Yeah, there are none. There are none. So this is reflective. Uh, this, is, this is not just in HR analytics. This is within every industry. The demand is spiking and the supply is slowly, slowly crawling. Most countries are not equipped to fill that demand because of limitations such as population. So here I'm going to talk a little bit about what we did between Ireland and Vietnam. So Ireland, how can we possibly fill this skill gap at home? We only have four and a half million people. A few years ago, the Irish government made a commitment. At that time, the economy was, was poor with the, the global crisis. And one of our parts of our strategy to climb out of this economic downturn was to focus on data analytics, build a center of excellence, become a hub for really high level knowledge. And they did that. Built some great institutions, brought in some, some great professors focusing on some of the biggest problems in the world. We've got great IP, we've got great academic institutions, we've got professors, we've got everything. But we're lacking young people who are ready to go and start a new career in this. We're lacking the people who can fill those courses. We've got access to the European market. We've got, we've got projects, we've got customers, we just don't have the people. Now I'm living over here in Vietnam and thinking, wow, it's, it's like a match made in heaven. Vietnam has this huge population, lots of young people, very highly ranked in science and technology. You have all the raw ability, all the raw materials. The infrastructure here is not quite as mature as the Irish one. So in the universities, for example, most of the universities do not have a data science course. The last time that I checked, John von Neumann Institute in Saigon was the only one offering an actual, uh, a full data science degree. Uh, things are starting to change and, and uh, these, these courses are being implemented. There's not enough professors. Uh, the, the academic infrastructure will take a while. So at that time, I went to uh, to the Irish government and to Irish Aid, and I asked for ideas. I said, "Here's our here's our problem. We're trying to build this data science team. We don't have the people in Ireland. We can't hire them. I'm over here in Vietnam. I see all this potential. How can we access them?" So Irish Aid was really supportive in making introductions third level institutes here and we created a collaboration. This was the Talent Analytics Lab. We worked with a top university in Ireland called Trinity College Dublin and Vietnam National University, uh, JVN uh, Institute affiliated with that. We built a team, we, we, we got some professors, we got postdocs that mentored our staff internally, uh, that, that helped us to solve our problems, that provided some of the infrastructure in the short term and it was a real eye opener. What it showed me is that just with this one small country, we can, we can start to bridge the gap. I can imagine what it would be like if Vietnam was to start to create more supply for the rest of the world. Oh yeah, and I'm not talking about outsourcing. So I would, if, you, if I start talking about outsourcing, I think, uh, I think we won't get out of here until 6 o'clock. But in short, there's a much bigger opportunity here. You don't want to provide outsourcing services for data analytics. You can do a lot better than that. And here it is. Here's the landscape of big data analytics startups and companies in 2016. It looks, looks crowded, right? Oversaturated. So many of these. Nah, it's just getting started. We could zoom in on any one of these boxes and fill the wall with opportunity. These are companies that, that made it their business to find one problem in one industry 
related to data science or data analytics and to solve that problem. These are proper what uh, what uh, Mr. Van earlier described as as unicorn companies. So there's unicorn companies that try to get the billion dollar valuation that you know act like a startup. There's workforce companies, workforce companies that are trying to pay their way day by day. But beyond that, data skills, data analytics, data science in itself is applicable across the board, no matter where you work, no matter what your industry, it will make your startup stronger, it will make your business stronger. Established enterprises everywhere you go. Looking at, I mean, if we were to take one of these at random, log analytics. So these are, those, those companies listed there, log analytics. What they do is pull files from a server, log files, analyze them, visualize the results. These companies are, you know, could be worth hundreds of millions, maybe, splunk, maybe a billion dollar company. There's nothing special there that Vietnamese cannot do. And if we look throughout this, we find many examples like that. And if we look here in the local market in Vietnam, again, so many of these, there's a lot of open space, blue ocean, something that's never been done before. So it looks crowded at first glance. When you dig in, you see now we're just getting started. And this is why I think that it's a unique opportunity for the young people of Vietnam. Because every other country in the world is struggling and they're going to continue struggling. Only Vietnam has this bulge in your population of loads and loads of 27 year olds coming through, high tech savvy, uh, learning about business acumen that can potentially capitalize upon these demographics and, and these trends. But there's one problem. From what I've seen now in my experience is that it's this yellow box down here. To become a data scientist, you need to think broadly. So in our experience growing this team in Vietnam, we found that the attitudes of our data scientists really good, really positive. The technical ability, very good, very strong. Could, could write the best algorithms you'll ever see. They often say that data science is a blend between three different areas. You've got mathematics and statistics. You've got coding skills, computer science, programming, scripting, hacking. Then you have the domain knowledge and the ability to look at the results of your analytics and make it tell you something, make it tell you a story. So for everybody, whether you plan to build a startup in this space, it doesn't matter. Because no matter what you go into, no matter what you do, you really need to learn how to make data tell a story. And I would strongly encourage anybody, all of you, focus broadly. Something I often hear Vietnamese people say is, we believe that you should focus narrowly and specialize rather than focus broadly and generalize. This is something I very strongly disagree with in, in, in this space in particular, that technical knowledge will only get you so far. And right now in Vietnam, there's a wealth of that, lots and lots of technical knowledge. And the ability to fill this gap here will create all kinds of new opportunities. Okay, so I'll leave it there uh, and take some questions. Eh? Thank you.